hello welcome to my channel in today's video i'll show you how to make a 1000 watts power inverter with just a few components the heart of the circuit is the tl494 passive modulation ic which is a very reliable ic for inverters and switch mode per surprise it has 16 pins and the entire pinout and connections for the ic and the whole circuit is as shown i recommend you use the irf 1404 per MOSFET because it can handle more than 150 amperes but if you have you can also use the IRF 3205 or the IRF Z44 but the power will be reduced the circuit contains just a few components the IC has two built-in air amplifiers with the pins as 1, 2 and 15 and 16 first off we need to disable the air amplifiers by pulling down their and inverting terminals to ground and pulling up the inverting terminals to 5 volts which is generated by the reference pin 14 pin 14 generates 5 volts when the IC is powered from 7 to 40 volts as shown you put them via a 47 kilo ohms resistor R4 connect the fin pack pin 3 to pin 2 through a 100 nanofarad capacitor as shown basically when the inverting input are at a higher potential than the and an inverting inputs, the outputs from the air amplifiers are low and the ICs will operate at maximum duty cycle. Pin 4 is the daytime control pin and to ensure that the daytime is at its minimum value, you need to pull it down to ground. The frequency of oscillation is determined by the turning capacity 1 and resistor 1. Use 100 nanofarads for C1 and 100 kilo ohms for R1 to give you an output frequency of 50 Hz the formula is 1 or over 2 C1 R1 you can adjust the components of either C1 or R1 to get any frequency you want but usually the frequency should lie in between 50 and 60 Hz for many appliances pin 7 is ground and pin 12 is the VCC it's pulled up to 12 volts which can be from a read acid battery or green series lithium ion batteries Pin 10 and 9 are the open emitters of the internal built-in transistors in the IC and this needs to be pulled down to ground as shown. Pin 8 and 11 are the open correctors and at this we will tap the outputs to power the FETs. The gates of the MOSFETs together with the open correctors they are pulled up to 12 volts through 220 ohms resistors which will be rated at least 3 watts. And to ensure that the outputs operate in a push-pull configuration you need to pull down the output control pin that is to ground. In the first case, let's say the first transistor is off and the second transistor is on. This means that pin 11 will be pulled down to ground and so the MOSFET Q2 will be off. But since C1 will be pulled up to 12 volts by the resistor R2, the gate of the MOSFET Q1 will also be pulled up to 12 volts and the MOSFET will conduct as shown. Current will now flow from the 12 volts through the winding S3, S2 through the MOSFET Q1 and to ground, making the first half cycle. After some time, the first transistor will turn on and the second transistor will turn off, and so the gate of the first MOSFET Q1 will be pulled down to ground and it will turn off. But since this is off, there will be 12 volts at the gate of the MOSFET Q2, supplied by the resistor 3 as shown, and the MOSFET Q2 will conduct. This now arose current to flow from the 12 volts supplied through the winding S3, S4 through the MOSFET Q2 and to ground as shown. This output is a square wave and it can operate many appliances. However, be careful when using this for devices that purely need a pure sine wave alternating current, otherwise you might damage them. The transformer is a common iron cord transformer and the winding ratio should be 1 is to 20. You can use one with an input of 240 and a dual output of 1212 and you use it in the reverse manner, it should work just fine.